feel wanted. Yes, Anthony. And uh, I used to tell everybody, you probably didn't get to know. Okay, come on YouTube. What's going on? Aha. Uh -huh. Hello everybody. Happy Friday to you. Uh -huh. I'm trying to sneak in a snack before the stream. Shut that guy up on the screen there. Heard enough of him already. Oh man, top chat. How in the world? Come on. Anthony, what's happening, brother? You are number one again. Good morning to you, sir. I'm going to try to get into live chat. Fake name in the house. What is happening? Daryl Deemer, we got Daryl here. Hey, bro. What's up? Good morning, the Zen Ginger. So glad you guys could make it. Uh, we're mixing it up over here, aren't we? The community tanks all over the place. So, um, Friday morning, 11 o'clock stream. Thursday night, video premiere. Wednesday, content uploaded. Monday, content uploaded. I'm not actually trying to saturate so much, um... What I'm doing is, is the AV good? I'm a little hot on this mic. I'm going to turn that down. Yeah, I was trying to shift things this week to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday upload schedule. And what happened was the premiere last night, I was trying to schedule it for this morning for this time slot. And it went live. It was like a runaway train. It went without me. There she goes. Hello, lookout. Welcome to the live stream. So, so yeah, we're doing we're we're doing uh, live instead of video premiere right now. Oh, oh, who, somebody else dropped in here. It's Janine the Fish Herd. Welcome, Science Gal Aquatics. Hey, Carrie. Everybody's working to up their YouTube game. We want to work on our production skill level, production quality. I'm changing my schedule around, trying to cultivate. Um, a new opportunity for new viewers to check in. Does that make sense? Without leaving, uh, the Zen Ginger says, hello, Lucky. Uh, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to leave anyone behind or, or, or abandon the platform we've built. But after about six months, it was just time for a little change so we didn't get stagnant, didn't get into a rut. So I'm feeling that out. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hey, Pam, Punchy Paints is in the house. Uh, got some hardworking mods in here. I appreciate all you guys do. So yeah, um, did a video last night, which I was absolutely tickled to release. I, I wish it would have premiered this morning. We could have talked about it in chat, but, and it had to do with that bucket that I used in the live stream this morning. Um, I, I got a bucket. I accessorized it, I accessorized the heck out of it, and motivated myself to do some spring cleaning uh, with the T's. Uh, I wonder if I could generate more tank space if I did some spring cleaning. Lo and behold, that's all it took. Uh-oh, look, he's barking. What's going on out there? May have some noise outside. Okay, so I got this bucket. I accessorized the heck out of it. I found a, an entire rack system that was just cluttered. In the video, you'll see it, and it'll be like, wow, River Life, I'm, I'm sorry to know that about you. Hey, Mike, the fish tank barn is lurking and working. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I didn't know you let your fish room get so messy. <laughs> but I scolded myself, too. But then the result is just amazing. It's worth watching that video just to see the before and after of, of what happens when you customize a a bucket and use it as an organizational tool. Um, River Wife, <laughs> I think that's one of her favorite videos. 
she liked the turnaround of that rack system. She has to walk by every time she comes and goes from the garage, which is half of the fish studio, two thirds, whatever. Anthony, Anthony's fish room says, Hey Mike. And my fish room was an absolute mess. And, uh, the Science Gal Aquatic says, I yell at myself all the time for making a mess. So anyway, if, uh, find some inspiration in my video. Give that video a, a watch. Um, I, it uploaded kind of by itself last night. I hit the wrong button, I suppose, trying to schedule the premiere for this morning. Uh, the video is just ready to go. It wanted to get out there into the universe, and there it went. So it's out there, and this uh, is kind of a, I don't know if you've noticed, we talked about my fish went to space, uh, and that was the last live stream. So if what's happening there is I was using the same thumbnail every week for the live stream. And it was like, it was a beautiful time. We got to hang out and share stories and talk about subjects in the community tank and different levels of the water column. It was a really good discussion. Uh, but I recently started working, uh, I joined a work group and we're, we're trying to uh, investigate best practices for our YouTube channel that will help us to better serve our viewers and our subscribers. And so it turns out that the, the the school of thought, which I agree with, that's working well on the platform now, it's not right or wrong. It's a work in progress. But what is working well is for the use of a live stream to also function as uploaded content. So we're always going to have a great time with the live chat. We're always going to have discussion, uh, by play, if you will. Um, but sometimes if you're on the, if you're not a part of the community, if you are a part of the community and you recognize the names, you have relationships or virtual relationships with some of the people, you can watch the replay. Uh, it's the next best thing to being there. But if you're not, it's difficult for a new community member to feel the welcome vibes, something along those lines to, to get much of the takeaway if they're not part of the live event. So the shift then is to enjoy ourselves as we are here together and also build our relationship. But for the replay viewers, after the live stream has ended, to also leave some, some content that anyone can enjoy, whether you're a part of the community or not, or whether you're looking for the social atmosphere, there's still some content there. So that is what's going on. Um, I'm missing some comments here. I'm not keeping up with chat. And if you haven't noticed, sorry about that. Anthony's fish friend says, what do you recommend to make a logo? I sent you a self-addressed stamped envelope, but I feel like, oh, okay. So Anthony's fishy friend says he sent me a self-addressed stamped envelope, but he feels like he needs the need to get his own stickers made because we're doing the sticker jam. I've also cleaned off my desk. It's been cleaning madness around here so i don't have all the stickers to show you guys that are going around in the sticker jam just the river life sticker but if you send a um, self-addressed stamped envelope to the river life youtube channel post office box it's in every um, description it's in this description of this video and mod might post that in a bit also i i include stickers from everybody that has sent me stickers and just kind of i'm a hub a sticker distributor so Anthony's fishy friend says he's done that. I don't guess I've received that yet, Anthony. I'll keep my eyes open. Um, I've had limited access to the post office. May be here. No worries. Uh, and knowing that uh, you're expecting a sticker jam, I'll get one out to you either way. Easier for me to send things than to pick things up. Okay, so as far as suggestions, what I use... Um, I've gone through several vendors for stickers and, and what I found that I like is sticker mule. They've helped me with the design, the layout, uh, custom size printing. And sometimes I don't know if they, if this is something they do, but sometimes I'll have a concept and I can send them the concept and they'll help me pull it together. Uh, so they don't 
I don't know if they advertise design work or not, but they've they've helped me design in the past. You may investigate that, Anthony. I'm not sure how it would work for you. Definitely, once you get your design, I recommend them as a manufacturer. Thanks to Zen Ginger for posting that post office box. Uh, Janine, the fish herd wants to know if she can ask the group a question. My Corys had babies. Congratulations, new baby Corys in the tank. This will make my tank overstocked when they grow. Yep. Yeah. I can't catch them without smashing up my scape. Advice. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my goodness. What are you going to do? You, you're such a successful aquarium keeper, fish keeper. Your quarries have had babies, and you've got a beautiful planted tank with hardscape involved, substrate. How are you going to get those guys out of there? I'd recommend... That And this is a way I recommend you make a small fish trap and take out the fish that get in the fish trap, whether they're babies or not, and begin the separation process. And a very simple one to make is to cut the top off of a plastic water bottle and then invert the top, kind of a cone funnel shape, into the uh, back into the bottle, put a little fish food in there, make, Find a way to, to keep the, that, that lid down in there. Friction is the best. You don't have to use any adhesive or staples or anything. And then put fish food in there. When they swim in, they get disoriented. They can't swim out. Then you can lift it out, disassemble, reposition the fish, take out the babies, and do again. You know, lather, rinse, repeat. That's, that's a suggestion. Give it a whirl. I hope it works for you. I've seen, uh, excuse me, I've seen shrimp keepers do the same thing with just a net. Stick the net in the tank with some food in it. You may get some. Good luck. I hope that works out. Aquafunk is in the house. What's going on, Jason? Listen, Aquafunk, if you haven't checked out Aquafunk's channel, you need to go see what Aquafunk's got going on over there. And for those of you who don't know, Aquafunk and I did a... Uh, is your shift key broke, by the way, Aquafunk? You're not tapping on the glass in the community tank, are you? Listen, he did a time slot takeover. He he live streamed in the place of the River Life Community Tank Thursday night live stream. And a lot of you guys, a lot of you tankers went on over there and showed Aquafunk some love. Thank you very much. I knew you would. Thank you very much for doing that. And I hope you'll I hope that was a new experience for you guys and you'll stay in tune with Aquafunk. A lot of energy, a lot of fish keeping experience. Also part of a growing community. Aquafunk wants to grow the fish tube community. He's helping himself. He's helping others. He's helping others help others. So he's one of us in that way. If you haven't discovered him yet, he's trying to grow his channel. He's monetized. He's over a thousand subs, working hard, improving his production quality. So I'm very proud of you, Aquafunk, for all you're accomplishing. Wish you the best going forward. And we're going to continue to support you here from the community tank. Turbo Fish is in the house. My goodness, how you doing, man? Haven't seen you in a while. Sand Creek Aquatics, got your art. Well, good. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy that, Nathan. Was thinking of you. Thought that might pick you up. Oh, my gosh. You're the greatest kids. All of you. Thanks for being here. I've got to start talking about the subject now, or I'll get a comment about... Uh, clickbaiting, which is okay. Comment away. Uh, and that, by the way, clickbaiting is a thing. Uh, we talk about as creators, uh, clickbait, not clickbait. Uh, you know, it's not a scantily clad model. And then you get in here and it's just this old bearded guy. And sometimes, you know, uh, like my, my fish went to space. Well, it wasn't the fish that I own currently, but it was the species of fish that I keep. Uh, kind of close there, kind of, kind of skirting the edge. But anyway, we do have to get on topic, which is spring cleaning. I already mentioned at the top of the show, I tricked myself into spring cleaning by asking myself, I wonder if I could get more tank space if I did some spring cleaning. So I had this five gallon bucket. I've been working on some content, ordered some accessories, pimped this bucket out, then dove into the mess. Watch the video. I'm talking about a serious mess. For, no one was injured. Don't get me wrong. However, I tell you, 
it was a mess that got cleaned up. And it's all in the video. I hope you'll check it out. Hey, Chevy Fish, good to see you here. Rodders, what's going on? Whole house full of great people. Thank you guys for being here. So um, I just did an Amazon search for five-gallon bucket accessories. Boom. Man, that page populated. There's so many accessories. Found a few that I like. Stackable interior trays. Um, organizer skirt that goes around the outside of the bucket. A lid that functions as a seat and has a pop-up compartment for more storage in the lid. And I also ordered a small set of uh, casters that the bucket would sit on. So I thought maybe that would make a rolling stool that would be cool in the fish room. And I've got to tell you, that was a fail. I don't recommend setting your bucket on casters and trying to use it as a stool because the center of gravity is uh, so shifted uh, toward your body if those wheels, there's typically three wheels on this set of casters, and if they're not lined up properly, if they if they turn against each other um, and you lose forward momentum of the wheels rolling and they stop, it's like a real fast break and you tip very easily. And that is not cool when you're trying to, you know, run around on a bucket and look at aquariums. There's lots of sharp edges, not to mention uh, the mess if you've got your bucket loaded with you know, what used to be your mess. I don't recommend that. You do what you do. I'm just saying it didn't work out for me. I did see, um, I did see a different style, which was actually heavy duty molded plastic that, that spread the casters out to the outside of the bucket and it had a very large rim. So the bucket wouldn't fall off. It, the bucket was seated like eight inches, but that thing was over a hundred bucks. I didn't, I didn't need casters on my bucket that much. So I didn't do that. Anywho, um, yeah, Science Gal doing some spring disinfecting. I hear you. And we could all, you know, I don't do windows, by the way. We ain't doing no windows. <laughs> but you do have to clean the fish room every now and then. Keep everybody happy. Keep peace in the whole house, not just the fish room. So that happened. It had a very happy ending. The video, the the making of the video, so smooth. It just worked out just the way I hoped that it would. And the result was just amazing. I mean, if you look at my face at the end of that video, you can imagine I'm hearing angels sing. I had a mess. Now, oh, look at all this space I've got. Look at, and I'll give you, here's, I'll, I'll, spoiler alert, okay? Spoiler alert. If you're going to go watch the video, there's not going to be a surprise if you listen to this part. So, You've been warned. So at the end of the video, when the rack is cleaned off and I'm surveying my space for new tanks, I find that I have space for four more aquariums. Four more. I put four five-gallon buckets on that shelf. Boom. And then I keep panning down. And like, oh, wait, wait. Eight. Eight new aquariums, so two shelves, four five-gallon buckets each uh, to make aquariums. I put a link uh, in the index card up in the corner for the aquarium video, how you can make an aquarium out of a video, uh, out of a bucket. You can make an aquarium out of a video? Hmm. You can make an aquarium out of a bucket, and that's so universal, I hope that that expands the hobby somehow. You're walking through the DIY store. I wonder if I could put fish in a bucket. You do the search on YouTube, second largest search engine on earth. Hey, this guy says you can do it this way. Boom, done. Got a five gallon bucket aquarium. Now you're a fish keeper. Good luck. I got eight more buckets to set up. And in the video I list, well, I don't know if that's for everybody. I don't know about a, a, a bucket. Can you really do a bucket? Or is, that, is that clickbait? No, 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 no. Hospital tank, quarantine tank, fry grow out tank, breeding tank, plant tank, project tank. On the list goes on. They at most five gallon buckets will actually hold over six gallons of water. You don't want to put that much in them, but you're talking about at least five gallons. And we've talked about this on the community tank live before. Fish that are suitable for a five gallon size tank at each water level surface feeders, mid dwellers, and bottom dwellers, there's 
a list of fish. There are videos on YouTube. Check it out. Um, lots of fish are suitable for a f- and and of course the uh, invertebrates, snails and shrimp. Perfect. I've I've got a aquarium now with shrimp in it. Um, hashtag check out my alien invasion video, where I had uh, alien shrimp in a bucket. So so many uses, so many functions, and then it changes like. You know, I've been keeping fish for over 50 years. It's kind of neat to have a new perspective, you know, a new focus, a new a new slant on things, if you will. And choosing fish, choosing tropical aquarium fish with a good dorsal view, top view, I don't know if I've ever done that before I started keeping fish in buckets. Because the beauty of an aquarium is you see that side profile. And you, um, I mean, my art, you know, that's all side profile aesthetics. But a different and new perspective is when you start keeping fish in a bucket, which is becomes essentially a small pond. Now you're looking for tropical fish with a dorsal view. And we've talked about that on the Community Tank Live stream. You can look through those... Um, there's a playlist on the River Life YouTube channel for River Life Community Tank live streams. And we talk about all the different levels of the water column. And in one episode, we talked about fish with a dorsal view. Another one, we talked about fish good for a five gallon. So you put those together, boom, you make your own list of fish that are really cool and invertebrates that are really cool to keep in a five gallon bucket. So I call it the Baquarium. And I've got plans to do more content because I used a bucket to clean out tank space for more bucket tanks. So now I've got some content lined up. I've got eight. I've got space for eight five-gallon aquariums. What am I going to do? You guys got any ideas? I'm going to look back up here at chat. Young Fish Aquatics, welcome. Good to see you. Let me know what goes in the five-gallon aquarium. What do you want to see? I, I, I've got some shrimp, small, I don't know. Eight, ten shrimp, uh, cherry shrimp. Uh, Texas Snake ID was here for a bit and retracted a message. So I definitely want to breed some shrimp in a bucket. So I'm keeping an eye on those guys. And then I'm going to do a series. To see, I'm going to, hopefully, in the plans, it will, it will happen, a series of bucket bred species. So when those shrimp actually have babies, that's... Cherry shrimp is going to be, check, bucket bread. I've got some other fish. Uh, thank you for the alien invasion video post, the Zen Ginger. That was a good find. Uh, David Kuzner, welcome. Brilliant. My first live stream with River Life from South Africa. All right. So cool to have you here, sir. Welcome. Um, we do have a nice diversity of people in here. I did a Facebook live stream earlier this week, and the different types of people that were in that thing were amazing. It, shocking. But... The point there is, is that we celebrate diversity. Diversity makes us more beautiful as a community. Absolutely. Okay, so we need some ideas for projects uh, in the aquariums. Definitely want to go on with a uh, bucket bread breeding in a five-gallon bucket. And I've, I've got some things up my sleeve there. Uh, it could take us some places we didn't think we were going to go. But anyway, we'll get, well, I'm not going to do that spoiler today. Chevy Fish, boom. Lease Killies. Let me go ahead and say check. Bucket Bread. Um, back when the YouTube channel was brand new, a few years ago, I had this thing called the Octacoy that involved buckets. It's similar, I did... I cleaned out some space in my little fish room with the plastic bins. I started using those plastic bins, put in a stock tank, about a 75 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank, and lined up eight five gallon buckets around the front of it. Got an eight way gang valve, a large fluval air pump, and ran air tubing. So I had a sponge filter in eight. Uh, it, I called it the Octacoy. And I've got, because I got these lights, these clamp-on lights from Ikea, they were black. And they said they were just like a bendy snake, you know, and the, the bulb was a little larger. And so they were, they were bent all up and over these buckets. It looked like an octopus. So I had the octacoy going on. Koi because the 75-gallon served as a temporary grow-out tank for some baby koi that I had. 
<laughs> so the octocoy was in play and one of those eight buckets had the least killie in it and they and they bred i think the rice fish would do well janine i like the dorsal view i've never kept them but they definitely have my attention white clouds are definitely on the list chevy fish um so and i have white clouds in my collection now so yes i do hope to breed those and um killies yep yeah. Achilles, the I have a difficult time with the Achilles, uh, keeping them fed live food, but that could change once I start getting some egg laying fry and need some baby brine shrimp. And we'll see. I'll keep that on the list. I'll put that on the uh, buffet of options. All the because the Achilles are so beautiful, man, they're stinking gorgeous. So all of this again made possible. This conversation's happening because I did spring cleaning with a bucket, started with a bucket. I decided to customize it. You don't have to. Um, inside I had stacking trays. Outside I had an, organi an organizational organizing skirt strapped right on there, no problem. And then a seat, a lid that had a storage compartment in it also. Beautiful, worked out just perfect. Everything is fantastic. I will tell you this, the weakness of that system is the bucket is top loading. So if you need something on the bottom, you're taking out everything that's on top of it. Now in my video, I had this, uh, this disc that comes with a five gallon bucket car washing kit. And I used it as the top shelf and then laid my uh, sample food packets on top of it to be the last shelf. You could use a Frisbee, okay? If you got the right size Frisbee, it already has the lip. Then you can just lift that top tray out. And then what was, in my case, the stacking trays have a handle. So you're actually just moving three trays and you're at the bottom. So it's not impossible. It's not like you have to take everything back out and then pack everything back in there. You're just moving three trays. So it, it is a, it is a, it's a con, but it's not, it's not like pour it out and do over. That's not what it is. Nothing like that. Funk, I know you're not yelling. Let's let everybody know Funk is not yelling. He types in all capital letters. He's not trying to be rude. I think his shift key is broken. We may need to throw that keyboard on the shift pile. I <laughs> kill me. Sir Pronalot, what's going on? Welcome. Sean, OOTD. Who have I missed? There's Texas Snake ID. I've used the bigger bucket used for pool chlorine buckets. I think they're 10 gallons. They work great. Man, I would be in heaven if I had a 10 gallon bucket. I'm going to go look for some of those. You know, I use, if you look in the video, and this is the truth. Not that I've been lying before now, but it's, I was kind of shocked that this happened. I, River Wife and I went out to eat weeks ago. It was very cold outside, snowing even a little bit. And at the restaurant, just outside the, their back door, they had a stack of white five-gallon buckets. And I said, are you guys throwing these away? I said, yeah, man, you want them? <laughs> yeah, man. So I loaded They had pickles in them before. So they smelled of, of pickles. But they're food-grade, clean uh, buckets for free. So I picked them up in the video. You see those eight buckets that I scored at a restaurant for free. So basically I got eight free aquariums and in the past, wow, man, I don't even know how many years ago I did. I did a similar thing with one gallon glass jars. Um, and I built environments that had um, a little bit of substrate, a live plant, a snail, and a shrimp, and would perform water maintenance and other maintenance at, at different scales to do a comparison and introduce light or prevent light from getting to the environment to just do comparisons. So I learned during that little project, which wasn't scientific, it was just total interest, that's all, but um, I learned I could go to sandwich making shops and they kept the glass jars from pickles and banana peppers 
they were happy for me to take them. So they didn't have to put them in their trash and they knew they were being recycled. So you, you may be able to score some uh, five gallon buckets, uh, that way. I do recommend the food grade. Uh, you know, you just, you never know. Otherwise there are lots of different containers, lots of different chemicals. Use caution, use caution. Maybe there's a best practice technique for, for cleaning buckets other than food grade or food safe buckets. I don't know because I've always been able to find the food safe buckets and the fish have always, our inhabitants have always done very well and surprisingly well. I did, I don't even know how long ago this was, but I did keep a zebra danio alive for three years in a one gallon jar, uh, with a plant and a shrimp and a, um, uh, a snail for a buddy. Now I recommend a 10 gallon for that fish. If you're going to keep it, I was, I just happened to have this, um, uh, this fish that needed a place to be for a minute and ended up, he stayed in there for three years and I, he was an adult fish when I moved him in there he got a little bit heavier in there being he he got instead of racing around with other fish in the community tank for food he got the bulk of the food the snails would get the scraps in this scenario and the shrimp I think was just basically living on biofilm it may have been eating some of the fish food but everybody was happy um the shrimp molted a couple times you know in one of those uh I, I just now I'm rambling one of those environments, I had uh, ghost shrimp that had babies, which isn't supposed to happen. It happens occasionally, but basically they need salt water to breed. But I had, uh, I had ghost shrimp babies. So I watched the female carry the eggs. She was all buried up. It was so exciting. And a few of the eggs hatched, not many, not all of them. And the babies, um, uh, like a small percentage of the babies that hatched survived to adulthood. But it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So that was one gallon bread. I don't recommend breeding in one gallon. I don't, but the five gallon for some fish, it's okay. Definitely the least killy had a blast in there. Maybe a trio of endlers, maybe a trio of small guppies. The mollies are too big. Platties, I don't recommend. Uh, gonna do the rice fish. The white cloud. Uh, yeah, got some things going on. So that's going to happen. And I never want to have to use one as a hospital tank, but I have over and over. Um, it's just too easy. There's always one in my fish room. It always is immediate isolation, quick to feel, easy to treat, ramp up. Um, I've always got nice, healthy plants here and there in different aquariums. I can grab a stem or two here. And before you know it, you've got what appears to be a planted tank and the other tanks are just glad that they got a thinning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, that said, I do want to do some, uh, projects involving just the plants. Uh, what, what figure out some plants, you know, Bentley Pasco is a virtual friend of mine who's very knowledgeable on aquatic plants. He's trying to organize for all of us a virtual, uh, hort uh, aquatic plant horticulture program so we can learn and develop uh, relationships get together on some resources and it'll be a certificate program so i've been uh, sending him a, a question every now and then and so here's a tip he says if you're propagating plants now if you have plants and they're propagating document them do photographs uh, it's going to be virtual okay so it's going to be the honor system you're going to have to send in pictures and so forth for their certificates, but, but go ahead and document the plants that you're propagating. And, uh, maybe if you want to get involved in that program later, it won't be free. There's some administrative costs that have to be covered. I totally get that. Um, then you can, you can get credit towards your certificate. So I would like, you know, as part of this project to see how many plants, how many different species of plants I can propagate in a bucket. And I really don't see a limit. I mean, I might be able to get the whole uh, master's aquatic plants, aquatic plant gardener certificate from a bucket. I think that would be pretty cool. So anyway, the Zen Ginger said, do you have chili rasbora aquarium? You know, I don't because I got chili rasbora in my nanoscape. 
if they should ever breed and have babies, they'll probably get get to be in a aquarium. Yeah, Chevy fish, the least killies, definitely. Those did well. They did. Oh, I'm way off. Where'd you guys go without me? It's like that video that premiered by itself last night. Zen Ginger said she found a five gallon clear bucket. I have one. I bought it from the uh, restaurant supply store and it was expensive, but pretty cool. Oh, it has a water spout on the bottom. Yeah, 45 bucks. You get that clear stuff. I mean, white plastic free, clear, 45 bucks. I mean, hey, if you got it, it's a good investment, right? Okay, so it's 11.39. 22 of you watching now. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a peek, see if we got any likes. Heck yeah, we got 19 likes. Thank you so much. One dislike. Oh my gosh, somebody woke up the dislike guy. Listen, I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to hang in here for about another 20 minutes. I'm going to shift gears. If everybody's had their fill of bucket talk uh, and spring cleaning so that, you know, we've checked the box. Yep, that's that's what this content was about. Um, I'm going to go live on Facebook following this stream, like probably really close to noon. That That didn't look good. What do you do? Okay, live on Facebook about noon on the River Life Art Facebook page. You see the art all over the place. I talk about it every time I turn the camera on. Really excited, inspired right now to be painting from the inspiration of nature, in particular aquarium tropical fish. So uh, in the last couple of live streams, we've talked about uh, that actual inspiration and the creative process. I pick a fish that I think is colorful. I do a little sketch with some markers to see how the colors are going to play with each other to see if maybe I get some spatial arrangement ideas. I say I paint from nature's palette. I'm endorsed by nature. And it's just a study, okay? This is how that goes. I just am playing around with my crayons, see what we get. And my, you know, the imagination is limitless. You already, you already get the picture, right? See, that one became a painting not all of them become paintings but uh i i work some things out you know with the little sketch and then if if i like where that's going if i get the vibe hey yeah yeah that's gonna work i can see that then i do little thumbnails with the actual paint and see how the paint colors i'm a colorist in case you didn't notice abstract minimalist art i've been studying uh irreducibly complex art for about 10 years. I started doing paintings in that form 10 years ago and have been doing art for about 30 years. Several solo shows, exhibits, all different types of media. Um, some pretty cool stuff. We'll be talking about that in the future from my artistic past. But the present, where we are, I do. You saw the sketches with the uh, just the markers. So then I go get some paint and I do these little. Um, these are stretch canvas and this one happens to be an Endler's live bear is what I titled it. And the viewer gets to be the boss. You see whatever you see, but I took a note of inspiration from the Endler's live bearer when I painted this, I see how the paint reacts, you know, how the edges are painted because on the hangable art, the originals, I paint the edges. So you don't have to have a frame. And I, I personally, I like that it adds an element, it adds a dimension. So I do, then if that works, then I paint a larger stretched canvas, you know, it becomes a hangable work of art. And then in some cases that art then becomes a print. Okay. So here is a print of the Endler's Live Bear. It became a, a larger piece of stretched original art. I'm, I'm pointing because I've got the originals hung all over the studio. So this was one of those card drawings. Then I played in the paint a little bit and said, yep, still like what those colors are doing with each other. So I painted that. Then I turned that into a print. Some of the print, not all the print, but some of the prints are available on Etsy. You can check out River Life Art on Etsy. Now, so that's the whole process, okay? Just, just to bring you up to speed. So by doing this, 
I lost my monitor. Hang on. Okay, by doing this, I end up with lots of these. So I'm selling them. I'm going to do an art auction today at about noon, noon, noon o'clock on Facebook, the River Life Art Facebook page. I'm going to auction these. Small paintings, small prices. Nobody's going to go broke. Nobody's going to get rich. But I'm going to move some of these little thumbnails because after you've done a few, you know, they start to, they stack up. See, you get, you get some stacks is what, is what happens. They, they stack up and it impedes your creative flow. And here we are spring cleaning. I'm going to get rid of some of these and my chat has fallen off again. Still 21 of you watching. So you're all invited. Zen Ginger, a tiny masterpiece on a tiny easel. And yes, we've got a few. We have a limited supply of little easels. River Wife has a miniature museum on a shelf with a light. It is the cutest thing. All these little easels with these little miniature original. Okay, so my friend Pam Earlywine, Punchy Paints, she was in here earlier. She, yeah, she's still here. She is selling. Hang on a minute. i got to show you her work. She's giving these away on her live stream, by the way. She does a few of these, and she gives a few away on her live stream. Check out Punchy Paints if you haven't. Subscribe to Pam. She's working. She's a working artist. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So she gives these away on her live stream. Um, sometimes she'll sell these for, for not a lot of money because it's an original work of art you can have without taking out a loan. You know what I mean? Okay, so she does. This is a this is called an artist trading card in the biz. It's two and a half by three and a half. A lot of artists do that just so they can have to swap back and forth. Pam does a really great job of giving those away, cultivating an art collecting community. I'm right in there. I'm with her. I'm for her, pushing her all the way, and she's helped me to um, to be inspired to do the same thing. You may want. A, a tiny masterpiece it may be just something that you want and you can have it for not a lot of money what happens on my work on this auction is you have to have PayPal you got to pay by PayPal within 24 hours and we start the bid for any of these at ten dollars and that's because it's free shipping so you, they're dimensional works, right? So it costs a little bit to ship them. I, I quoted that last time. It's three, four, four twenty-five, something like that. So if we if we start at ten dollars, I can sell one of these at ten dollars and recoup my cost. And they just come in all colors. They come in all colors. This one's I sh I'm showing you the back quickly so you can know where the inspiration comes from. But the viewer's the boss. It's abstract art. See what you want to see. My wife sees birds when she looks at a lot of these. Some of them have different textures to show you some depth. And then the title just gives you a direction. If you're a fish keeper, you oh I, yeah I see that. Unlike this one, this one is just random. Okay. I'm checking out colors. I'm seeing how they play with each other, checking out the transparency of the color. Then I'm just making some shapes that I like. And they're just random. I got a couple of larger ones here. By larger, these are still thumbnails. They're five by seven. Yeah. I love this one, by the way. I asked my wife what she thought the title was, and she said... Ruby Throat Hummingbird. Oh, close. It's the green and old. You might see something else. It's okay if you do. I do a Patreon series on how to view modern art. And so, unlike classic modern art, if that's a thing, it sounds like an oxymoron. I, I don't have to be so far out there that I'm defying realism. I'm just seeing what I see and I'm interpreting it the way I interpret it. And if giving you a title that gives you a perspective, maybe not the one you choose, maybe um, you don't even have to consider it. So this could also be a uh, green, red, white study. Okay. Then let your mind go wherever it needs to go with a title like that. But I'm inspired by nature. My art show coming up June the 1st is titled Rat Cross Endorsed by Nature. And by that, I mean uh, I paint 
directly from the palette of nature. Uh, these beautiful, natural creatures. I'm a colorist. They speak to me in this way. It's basically from an aesthetic sense of seeing our fish. Because the show is local, I'm also including some indigenous species, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and of course fish. And here's one of those. This is just the thumbnail. Um, this is the only native trout in my state, Tennessee, the brook trout. We also have brown trout and rainbow trout, but the brook trout, and if you look that up online, you'll see these colors are not fantastically imagined. This fish is colorful. I'm doing some play on the, the space, and when this goes to a canvas, you'll see that from the card to the thumbnail to the canvas, it's a progression. It's not going to be a copy of this. It, it'll be different. But here's the thumbnail we'll have. And this one's going to be in the show, this brook trout. Not, not this thumbnail, but the brook trout will be. So there you go. This, for instance, I love this. This is one of my favorite little paintings. This one's called Peacock Bass. Um, a little bit different than the card, and it is hanging right over there. And the hanging piece of art looks a little bit different than this. So that's the process. We got lots of little original pieces of art, tiny masterpieces, if you will. It gives me a chance to talk about the River Life art on Etsy. Some of you um, have gotten some of the prints. I appreciate that very much. And the River Life art on Patreon which has three levels, including a level that gets you a print each month and access to the video series. I have three in the can already for three months, and then we'll, we'll go beyond that. Hopefully this afternoon I'll get three more done. Um, but at that level, the masterpiece level, you get not only your print for the month, but also some art education. It's not free. It is what it is. It's a lot cheaper than the tuition I paid to get the education. You know what I mean? But I'm happy to pass it on. I'm like Punchy Paints. We need to cultivate an art collection, especially with so many natural artists uh, focusing on our, our aquarium hobby. What fish room wouldn't be enhanced by a piece of art that represents nature? And there's just some fantastic art people out there. Um, I'm glad to be picking up the brushes again. I started doing abstract art the decades ago, and I didn't see a lot of it in our hobby because the fish are so beautiful you want to you want to recreate the realism right so here we are we're doing this um, we're doing this irreducibly complex abstract minimalism art with fish as the inspiration along with some other things especially with the local show coming up but that's what's going to happen in about 10 minutes on the Facebook on the River Life Art Facebook page I hope to see you there uh, I'd love to have you there we're going to just run through some of these little thumbnails to see if there's any interest in you guys owning some of your own. We're going to um, not be doing any more spring cleaning today, but I am glad that I was able to do quite a bit of that. And it, it worked out. I mean, I'm going to have eight more project spaces. You guys can come along for the ride. Help me decide what we're going to drop in those eight five-gallon aquariums. Uh, Redfish, Bluefish, welcome. Uh, good to see you here. Uh, Sean OOTD talking about some Latin named fish tequila trying to get skiffia oh my gosh the super sweet live bearers am I right I'm so far behind way to go Sand Creek <laughs> one time in this world that I've lived in it's good to be negative yeah, I'm, I'm a really positive guy. Happy to be negative. Way to go, Nathan at Sand Creek Aquatics. Glad to hear that. Um, Shrimp-inspired art. I may have one here. Just the old red crystal shrimp. Oh, no. No, no, no. I did another one. And I, it actually, um, it's on an easel beside my 1.5-gallon nanoscape. Uh, and it, it appears, it's featured in the video titled Shrimp Capades. It was just two or three videos ago. So yes, got a couple of shrimp paintings out there. Okay, cool. So at 11.53, 20 of you still watching. You've all been invited to the live auction coming up at noon. 22 likes, 21 here. Thank you guys. That is amazing. I appreciate that very much. 
You guys help me to stay inspired no matter what it is I'm doing. I hope that this social time is good for us during this strange time in our lands, across the world, all over the globe. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with me. This is out of the ordinary for us. I'm still investigating. I'm feeling my way in the dark, if you will. But um, we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. We're going to help each other help each other. We're going to hang out like this and encourage one another. Uh, I appreciate all of the effort that you guys do to give me the compliments and show up and, and get along, you know, in the chat. It's just a nice space. It's just a peaceful time. And I thank you very much. Couldn't, couldn't happen without you guys. So thanks for all that you do. I'm going to shut down here, get ready to get fired up over on the Facebook, uh, the River Life Art Facebook page where we're going to go with the auction. We're going to see if anybody has any interest in any of these thumbnails. Uh, we're going to sell them cheap, so bid bid often, make your best bid, bid often, bid high. I'll see you there. Till the next time, why don't you guys get out there and see it, love it, and live it.